Hiya folks and welcome to our first vlog of 2023. We've got a lot to do this year, we've got a lot of cooking videos to get out. The first two videos you've seen are remnants of last year's videos, so they do contain carbs and stuff like that because we filmed them uh, in between the period of Christmas Day and New Year's Day, sorry. Boxing Day. No, yeah, one was for Boxing Day, the bubble and squeak, wasn't it? Didn't film Christmas Day. No, between that period I said. So those two videos, once they're out of the way, all the new videos you see coming up now, it's been overwhelming the amount of people who want to, or are interested in the low carb meals and the, the sort of, the more healthier option to control uh, maybe a diabetes or even just to lose weight. So we're gonna, you're gonna be seeing loads of that sort of stuff coming up folks. And a lot of it's gonna be done in the air fryer and also in our 15 to one pressure cooker type thing, the Ninja or whatever. So plenty to come. Where are you now, baby? So it's January the 1st and uh, we've got so much to put out there, but we've got loads of stuff to do around the house first. So I said to Sharon, we might as well start filming vlogging today, baby. Well, I really think you want to see me take down a few decorations. <laughs> well, I've got some stuff to do as well. We're going out for dinner later around Gary and Stacey's and uh, they're doing us lunch. The time now is 10 past 12. We've got to go around at hour past one. So we're just doing a few stuff. Yeah, the tree's not coming down yet. I, t I take bits down at a time because I can't stand the bareness of it all. What's going to happen, baby? I know, but I like to do it gradual. Right. Well, let's get on, do our little uh, chores around the house and uh, come with us. See you in a minute. So, I'm just cleaning out the fire grate. We're lucky enough to have uh, a real fire. We do love that and we burn logs. I understand some of you, perhaps in London, for example, are not to allowed to have real fires anymore. I, don't, I didn't know that. I heard that from somewhere. You can't burn like an open fireplace. I Cor love that. Correct me if I'm wrong, Shia, but I think I've heard that. It might be wood or logs or whatever you're not allowed to burn. And yet, did you see the amount of blinking fireworks they let off on the New Year's Eve fireworks? <laughs> it puts it into perspective that some people can do one thing and the majority are not allowed to do it. The amount of smoke and toxic stuff from them fireworks that went up throughout the year, baby. Listen, yeah? don't start the new year off, Mo. No, I'm just letting them know that, that it's one rule for us and one rule for them. But still not them, I mean the, the powers that be. And poor people can't have an open fire, but yet the government can sponsor or pay for, well, I say probably taxpayer pay for it, Sharon, all them toxic fireworks that went up, up thousands of tens of thousands of pounds, probably a hundred thousand, I don't know how much they cost, but anyway, you people who can't have an open fire, you're missing out, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, in the event of saving the planet, there you go. Fire's been going for years. Anyway, that's another story. So I've got to get this fire grate out now. So I've taken the surround off. That's what's been left over of the last fire. So I'll just take that out. And underneath here, folks, is a ash bin or pot or whatever. I've already emptied it once this Christmas, but... Uh, so yeah, we do this as soon as it fills up. We'll take that out. There we go, just shake that off. Let's rub that into there first, look. Just get it into there first. Like that. There we go. And I must clean my chimney again soon. So that now lifts out. And that ash there can now be emptied onto the garden because ash apparently is good for the garden. So I'll What's empty that, Eh? Go and check that pear tree. Hold on. What's that, baby? Look at that pear tree. Oh, it's leaning I right. I noticed that this morning. I did it at the bottom. It's leaning right over, isn't it? You're going to have like, a little birdie in it. Yeah, yeah. I think I needed to stake that last year, didn't I? It's been very windy. Yeah. Right, well, I'm just going to empty that ash on the garden, folks, and I'm going to have a look at that pear tree, so I'll see you in a minute. Well, folks, third of Jan today, and uh, Sharon's not well. She was all right this morning. She got up, she took some decorations down, she's done some work out, uh, and then suddenly it came over and hit her, and she feels pain in the back and shoulder, and that's what I had about two or three weeks ago. Comes out of nowhere, I woke up in the middle of the night and it happened, and I was all right when I went to bed. So I'm looking after the channel, just doing some housework as you can see. Just cleaning out the uh, Ninja drawers. As I said before, what we do, sometimes we use them um, silicone things in there and lay bacon in or sausages in them, but sometimes we just go uh, commando and just sort of do it like that, lamb in there. And when, it, when we take it out, take the food out, we get some fairy liquid, whack it in there like that, hot water, agitate, and just leave it on the side until we're ready to deal with it, maybe an hour or so later or whatever. And then all I do then is I take the tray out, I dip it in hot, uh, hot water, hot soapy water, give it a clean down like I've done with that one already, stick that one in there like that, get the cloth and go all the way around, and then just dry them off. That's how we clean our 
tray, but if you don't keep on top of it and just leave it on the side, it all goes hard and it makes life a whole lot harder. So that's what we do. So I've just done the washing up and I've given our gas cookers, you have to give these a bit of a clean down as well, folks. Just give a wipe over. Always when we finish using our gas bottles, we lift the lever up to the unlock or the, the uh, unlock position so that the gas bottle is out. It's not connected. When you push that lever down, that pulls the gas bottle in. And what we always do as well is just give it a sniff once it's locked down, because we've had it before where when we've locked it down, the gas has been leaking out. And when we've turned the gas on like that, and that sort of shut down like that, we've seen a flame come out of here where we hadn't checked the gas bottle and it's where it's been leaking. And sometimes what you have to do, let's just take that bottle out for the minute. Inside here is a, a rubber O-ring. Just make sure it's clean in there. And what we've had as well, when we've pulled the gas bottle in using that arm like that, can you see this bit at the back there? That's bent backwards. So we've had to pull that forward again. They lose a bit of tension. That means they ain't putting as much pressure on that seal there as well. So that's just something else to look out for, folks. But one thing we've noticed, definitely in this cold weather since we've been um, using these, is that in the cold weather, when these bottles are cold, they give out less pressure. In the summer, it's not a problem, but definitely in a colder kitchen, or because we've not been putting blinking heating on. So push that in first. Have a sniff, can't smell anything. You know it's sealed up all right. Shut it up and then literally just turn on and you're, you're working, cooking on gas, so to speak. But you so see, we've got a nice big flame there at the moment because it's not too cold in here. But when it is cold, that flame can drop right down. I've had bottles before when we was cooking outside with uh, Lee Van Camp in his uh, video when we done that outside cooking bit. I thought the gas bottle had gone out, but it's because we was in sort of one degree temperature outside. And when we come, I brought that same bottle back in, the same cooker back in, and I set the shower and changed the bottle. She didn't know that I thought it had gone out. She turned it on and the flame was way back up again. So it just shows you cold temperatures do affect them little bottles. But we are looking at possibly getting an induction hob as well. We're gonna be looking into that in the new year. I'm not too sure exactly yet what we're gonna be doing over here. I may put a temporary worktop over there. I'm not too sure yet. And maybe just sit a freestanding induction hob on the top there. So again, I'm not sure what's happening with that at the moment. Whether we keep that or whether we get rid of it will depend basically on whether the energy prices come back to some sort of normality. I don't know, so we're gonna play that one by ear. But I may just put a board over that Disconnect the gas pipe, because this has only got gas on the hobs, you see, uh, not on the um, ovens, they're not, uh, they're, they're electric ovens. So I may unplug the bayonet thing for the gas and then put some sort of board over that and then buy an induction hob to sit on the top there, like a freestanding one, and uh, use the induction hob over there. But we do like cooking over here on this central station, and it also makes life a whole lot easier for us when we're doing our videos. I don't know whether, whether we would go down the road of flushing in an induction hob in here. I'm not sure, I don't know. I'd have to, I'd, I'd have to look into that, because we do like a nice worktop here as well, because we use this as when we come in with a shopping, the dump shopping on the top as well and all that. So that's something to look forward to in the future. We'll make a decision on that. Let's go and see Sharon. She's inside now, sitting down. I've told her to put her feet up, and uh, I'm looking after her today. So coming in here, Father Christmas is still here, folks, but my little princess, look. I was just telling them, Shell. I've got a light on, I've got the light on. Let me dim it down a little bit, hold on. There you go, baby, down to 31%. So how did this come on? When did this come on, baby? About an hour ago. And what happened? You was all right this morning, weren't you? Perfectly fine, taking down the lights, took the tree down over there, and I just sat down, I'd pain in my shoulder. Which is what I had a couple yeah. of weeks ago. And now I've got an upset stomach. I had that as well, and uh, you got, got... Oh yeah, a headache. That's it. Stiff neck and sore ear, very sore ear there. Yep, unbelievable. Oh, for now I feel good. Well, at this room, folks, it's nice and warm, and all we're using at the moment is that little paraffin heater over there, although we've got the real fire, which we've been uh, looking behind here. She started to strip the tree down there, all the decorations yeah. have come down, we've got Evie and Harry here, and as you can see, we've got plenty of blankets in the room, because we're basically only really heating the rooms that we're in, Sharon, aren't mm. we? And that's something we're all having to do. Can I sort that dog out? He's got my slipper. Oh, he's got her slipper. <laughs> he's got her slipper. Right, I'll let him do it. Come here, I'm going, I'll come in for him. You watch him drop it when I'll get around there, folks. Merlin, drop it now. Drop it now, see? Look, he knows who's the boss, look. Leave mummy's slipper alone, Merlin. Oi, 
Sit. Sit. You're not having it. Hey, baby. These are good as well, folks. This is what we bought from that garden centre, Sharon, wasn't it? Mm. And uh, we sometimes just, well, most nights now, we're sitting here just putting that on with the telly on, like that, and they actually flicker. You can't see that, can you? Yeah, the light's a bit bright in here now, but oh, there, we there we go, look. They flicker, and it's a lovely light it gives off, isn't it, Sharon? Yeah, it is. But... And it's just uh, three day batteries, folks. We use that every night now. It won't make your wall. No, that's why we've got the blankets on, baby, aren't we? So we're uh, just watching a bit of telly, or Sharon is at the moment. I'm doing a bit of housework. As Sharon just said, we swap roles at the moment. But I've got a few jobs on, folks. Um, I'm doing work on videos on my car at the moment. I've got some windows and trim to put in on my car. We've just been down and bought some uh, filler knives and a paper knife. We're gonna be doing our hallway very shortly. So I'm gonna get back, finish my housework, sit down for a bit, make Sharon a cup of tea after. I've just done her breakfast at the end of the day. Uh, we've had, I've given her a breakfast. It's, well, I call it a brunch, really. She had bacon, scrambled eggs, mushrooms, and uh, tomatoes. As you know, she's on the, uh, not the keto, but the, the low carb. In fact, that's what we're both doing. I'm zero, or very, very low carb, not zero carb, obviously. You're allowed up to 30 grams a day. To, you can get up to 30 grams a day of carbs and still get into ketosis to burn body fat. So uh, that's just something I'm doing. I am basically vegetarian from Monday to Friday, and Saturday and Sunday I will be eating meat. But today I did have some bacon today, so I've just literally had about three or four streets of bacon as my lunch. And the thing with eating protein, as opposed to eating carbs, folks, when you eat carbs, it sends a message to your brain a little bit later on that you, you're still hungry and give me more carbs, give me more carbs. When you eat protein and also fat, fat's not the enemy, folks, remember that one. Don't, don't, don't take my word for it, do your research. When you eat protein and fat as a meal with no carbs, then it doesn't send them triggers to your brain to say that you're hungry a little bit later. In other words, it makes it easier to cut out food and snacking because you haven't got that carb trigger going out of your brain. Just something to be aware of. So if you're going to lose weight this year, so we're going to be hopefully following out our diet plan, which we've got uh, just below this video. I'll put it down there. We did it successfully and lost a lot of weight and got out my blood sugar under control. Carry on doing it, but do not cheat and have carbs. Do not cheat and have carbs because you need to get your body into ketosis, which means that you're burning your own body fat. And you can only do that if you're not hungry. You won't get hungry if you don't eat carbs, but you eat, if you are hungry, eat protein or fat. Eat an egg, eat some ham, eat some bacon, eat something like that, but don't eat bread, pasta, wheat, sugar, flour, all that sort of stuff, pastry, nothing like that. Anyway, I'm ranting again, I'll see you in a minute. Right, folks, here we go. Well, <coughs> we've both been preparing the meal, shall we? Yeah, I'm poorly. She's not well, so, but it's the first time, folks, we've used this Ninja to do a meal Properly, yeah. And uh, what's your feelings of it? Although we're still learning our way, aren't we? Well, I love it. What you've actually cooked in here, how did you do it? Hold on, let's come around the other side. So what we got in here now, let's have a little look. It's got me potatoes and veg. So you're using it at the moment I'm as an air, an air fryer, folks. But before that, you had it on what? Steam roast, because I had the lamb steaks on top. Right, All so... All the juices from that fell onto me potatoes and carrots and parsnips. And how long did these lamb steaks take? About 15 minutes. Yeah, so they was in there, the veg, the potatoes, the roast potatoes were still at the bottom, yeah. but the meat cooked way, way first, didn't it? Yeah. And then you took the meat out, which is these lamb minted steaks, then. See, Look at them. One, 15 minutes, folks. Oh, I love lamb. And then, as I say, she took the, um, lifted drained, it up. Drained some of the fluid out. From yeah, because you had to put some stock in the bottom, didn't you? Mm. Well, the, when and the stock, from the, when the meat come down. It's the gravy. It made the gravy as well as the gravy for the veg as well. So um, the minty flavour of the lamb now in the gravy yeah. as well. But we had a grill in there, didn't we? What was the grill we had in there? Just well, showing that. Over there. You had it that way up, did you? You have it that way yeah. or that way up? Yeah. You had it that way up. There's another layer as well. Yeah. We'll like that. But you had it like that. You had the lamb steaks on there, yeah. and all all the uh, root vegetables, which you can see there, were cooking underneath. Yeah. Now, as you can see, you happy with that? I'm over the moon. And they didn't take long either, did they? No, and I. I think it's quicker than the other air fryer. And again, I don't know whether you noticed, folks, but there's no frying pans or stuff all over the place. All right, we had the frying pan. We've done the veg, apparently, you can steam veg in there as well. But we did have the veg just in one big pot on our little hob like that sort of thing. So that's what we did there. And I've just got to come over to the uh, kasori because I've got my veggie sausages in there, believe it or not. I'm just going to turn them over. They're halfway through. Oh, they're hot. So I'll just turn them over, folks. And I'll find the Richmond ones. 
Not that I'm a, a proper vegetarian, because I've already had a little bit of meat as well. I'm what you call a, a five day vegetarian. So I'm eating meat of a weekend only, as I said earlier on in this vlog. But look at this dinner, folks. Look, one, two, three, four dinners there. Oh, I don't want the carrots, baby. Oh. I don't want the carrots. They're root vegetables, I can't eat them. Cooking is so much easier now. Mine's just green veg. Root veg for me is a no-no, no, I'm afraid. No, that, that, that will raise me blood sugar and I don't want that. Oh, how awful. I know. So that's that. I'm all green, folks, as you can see there, look. But I do love sprouts, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, I love all that. But as you can see, look, four substantial dinners there. Once I get my sausages on there, I'll cut them up and then I'll pour this lovely thick gravy we've got, which as Sharon says, is made out of the meat juices that come out the bottom because we did put some stock in the bottom of that. And also the, uh, the, the, the liquor or the cooking liquor of the, um, the veg that we had in the big pot as well. Superb. So once we do a few more cookings in these, these are our sort of experimental days basically, before we bring them to you, we want to know how it works properly so that we don't bugger up and show you the wrong thing. And whatever, however complicated it is, we want to make it as easy as we can for you to learn from us, if possible, to take the shortcuts. So anyway, we're going to go now folks, I'm just going to dish up and uh, we're going to eat our dinner, so we'll see you a bit later on. Right folks, we've been shopping and we've just come back and we've had a delivery from Amazon. You probably know that we've been using our little uh, mini gas hob there and we've got two of them, but we've actually gone out and got from Amazon this Abusi, uh, what they call induction hob, aren't they? Yeah. Let's just cut that open, baby. Let's get over there for a minute. So this one coming in at a special deal, just over a hundred pounds, yeah. folks. I'll leave a link in the description below. It's a 2,800 watt one, I think, but we're gonna do a review on this. So let's get it out of the box first of all, and let's have a look and see what it looks like. And uh, we've done a little check with our cookware and most of our pans aren't induction hob friendly, so to speak. So They're very old pans, yeah. very, very old pans. So let's have a little quick look at this. Let's put this over here first. That's our pots and pans. We'll show you them in a second. Right, okay, babies, let's have a little quick look in there. It's a nice sleek looking thing. It's not too heavy. No, it's nice and light, actually. That is it. It's the uh, FSIRC111 hyphen 2800 and this is it folks it's an induction hob it's basically got two hobs here you've got your plus and minus to heat it up and to turn it down you can have a timer function you can change the function to display in power in watts when it heats up you can have the watts coming up there or you can have it degrees c set it for degrees centigrade you've got a keep warm function now and obviously a minimum and maximum so we'll have a look at this nearer the time but as i say this turn it over show let's have a look underneath there we go, it's got two little fans underneath there. And I think it's a maximum of 2.8 kilowatts. Is that what it's on there, Sha? Yeah. Yeah, 2.8 kilowatt maximum. Yeah, yeah. So it's less energy than a kettle, basically. But, um, and these are the five piece stainless steel induction hob saucepans we've actually bought with it as well. 10 year guarantee. 10 year guarantee, baby. And we had to get these because we put a magnet on our ones. And they wasn't magnetic. They have to be magnetic, folks. So, we've had uh, them have it. So it's uh, been years. Yeah. I mean years. Yeah. Yeah. So we've now got rid of them. They've got to the tip. So we'll open that up. Let's have a look at what we've got here. Glass lids, which is what we was after. We wanted see-through lids. So that's the glass lids, folks. Three different... So is there three different saucepans? Oh, you've got a little milk saucepan there. Yeah, open that one up, baby. And as you can see on the bottom there, I don't know if you can see that, Durable stainless steel, impact bonded for even heat, and they are ideal for the uh, induction hobs. So what else have we got in there? Oh, I see, four saucepans. So three big saucepans and a little milk saucepan, basically, isn't it? So that would be the lid for that one, I would imagine. Yeah, there you go. Nice and stainless steel, very nice. And we've also got a frying pan with that as well, baby. That's a non-stick frying pan as well, isn't it? But we did check out other frying pans and they was okay as well, weren't they? Yeah. So they are the Mia five piece stainless steel induction. Maya? Maya, Maya. Maya. Uh, saucepan <laughs> wear set with a 10 year guarantee. Oh, where's the Happy days. Oh, so there's the two new things we've got, folks. Them. Right. And also, although we've got this old kettle and this is supposed to be um, it is actually induction. Our but we thought we'd treat ourselves to a new kettle as well for the induction of. How many litres is that one? I don't know. Three litres. Oh, it's a three litre. Okay, that's fine. Oh, a bit of gold. Blingy, in it? Let's have a look at the base of it. This is what me and my daughter picked. All lined together. 
And again, German, German made, there we go. Nice thick base on it as well. And that is induction hob as well, is it? Yeah, the whistle, yeah, that's my problem. And the whistle as well. Yeah. So there you go, folks. We've got that coming up in the new, oh, what? Oh, it's still all our packages. Well, what else you got there? I don't know. Well, that might be for me. Well, we'll have a look. Right, so what else we got here? Again, from Amazon, folks. Oh, I know what this is. This is our almond flour there. That's what we buy in the packet. And this is what you call Facilium Husk, folk. Uh, we're gonna be showing you a special bread we're gonna be making with that. This is quite dear. That's a kilogram, that costs 19 pounds, believe it or not, but that will go a long way. This is um, one kilogram of almond flour, which we got from Amazon as well. And I think that was nine pounds something, nine pounds 99. Couple of electrical sockets, folks. That's for our um, hallway, which we're gonna be re renovating. What else you got there? Uh, ironing board cover there. No, oh, it's it's, the it's out. It doesn't matter. It well, doesn't it does matter. When it gets oh, all this nonsense about recycling. Again, Gary and Stacey got two of their full bins refused because the, the bin man opened the lid up and there was a bit of cardboard in there in both of them. And he told them we can't take it. And then he advised, so listen to this, then he advised Stacey to take the cardboard out or take it all out and just put it in black bags and throw it in the general waste. Work that one out. So she's gone into this trouble of recycling everything and then they just say put it in general waste. Yeah, because the cardboard now has to go into the cardboard waste. What a load of... Rubbish. Exactly. Rubbish. Anyway, baby, it's getting a bit late in the day now. It's a little bit dark out now, folks. So time now is 4.21, we just come back in. And um, I've got a bit of headache, so I'm going to cut the tablets, baby. Look after me. Oh, don't rub there, shall you? Rub it off. Well, you want it? Oh, you want your headache rubbed out? See you in a minute, folks. Hello, baby. Hello. We're in our favourite shop, aren't we? Well, my favourite shop. Well, this is better actually than B and Q. Yeah, we've been to B and Q like yesterday. This. Absolutely rubbish. But in here, folks, they do everything. Yeah, let's have a, kitchen bits for us. Let's have a little look around, see what they got in here. This is your local DIY shop. You know, your, your old-fashioned old hardware hardware thing. shop, right? Let's have a look around. So this is a, this is your bit, Sharon. Oh yeah, that's good, isn't it? And again, all sorts in here, folks. Even down to I come here for my black bags. Yeah, they're stronger. those are great black bags, Emily. Yeah. Now what we were looking for was um, not today, but a thermos flask that people can take to work with them. I've not seen the refills. Do you think you could still get them? Yeah, look. That's so the old... It's rather £2.50. How old is that? Look at that. That's fantastic, isn't it? You don't see that very often, do you? I didn't think you could still get them. Yeah. Well, the new flasks are all made of steel now, aren't they? That's one of the old original glass ones, Sharon. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Look, and there's quite a few of them there, folks. Along with the old enamel pots as well. Look at these. They're absolutely fantastic. So, yeah, you've got all sorts in there. You've got car, even car stuff and cleaning fluids and oils and stuff look chainsaw stuff two stroke these sort of shops you can just walk around this was the fun of shopping Sharon wasn't it oh. years ago yeah. yeah and also not overpriced all reasonable stuff as well and when you come around you got a paint section here where they actually mix the paints for you as well you've got all your tins of sprays and stuff look and going down the end walk down here into the cold bit this is where you've got your gardening section. You can buy seeds down here. Around here, all your garden stuff. Look, it, it just goes on and on. Down here, look. Superb. It's like a little oasis of all sorts of stuff. And if you ain't got it... it yeah, is. oh yeah, and they got they got their, their other shop, which is the same shop, uh, about six miles away. And we've just asked some architraves, haven't we? Mm. Which he's got some here, but he said... And, and the great thing about this, you know, like when you go into a B&Q shop or whatever, and you go to the the people working behind the counters or whatever, they don't know what they've got. He says, we've got all that in Coningsby, I'll get it shipped here for Monday. So we're coming back Monday. And he tells you that. get the prime one and because it paints in it as well. Yeah. They wouldn't do that. In and the they know exactly what, what they got, what it's for. Got the sugar oh, one the old-fashioned looking yeah. ones. Vintage looking, aren't they? Look, retro. Sugar inside. Yep, talking about retro, yeah. show. Look at these ones, look. Just put this back. Remember these, look. These are great, these are. These are my, when you want to make a pie, look, oh, the, old, them, the old fashioned pie dishes. Get one out. Look at them, look. Oh, two sizes. Look at, my pie. <clears throat> look at them, look. The enamelled type, aren't they? 
And they've even got the enameled little plates there as well. Look. For camping, they? Yeah. I love the old enamel stuff as well. So you get them, you get them there, look. Then you get your enamelled mug. Then you got your flask. Happy days. Keep it in your car, shall And have a nice bit of uh, al fresco food. Yeah, which you can cook at home. You can make a nice stew up and put your stew in there. Pour it into your cup. Absolutely fantastic. Look at that. But it's all reasonably priced as well, folks, you know. What's that? £22.50 then. Yep, the external lights, yeah. Stainless steel as well. Yeah. Stainless steel, they won't go rusty. So that's what's been going on in our lives. Don't forget, support your local businesses. That was Goodwin's, our local ironmonger show, isn't it? or hardware oh, shop. Wow. And uh, yeah, we're down there all the time. He's ordered the uh, wood for our architrave for Jimmy's Kitchen, which we're going to pick up tomorrow. Ideal, fantastic. Anyway, we've got a couple of super chats, baby, haven't we? Yeah, I'd like to thank Salt669. Thank you very much. And Christine's Home Life. Thank you very much, you two, for supporting our channel. Absolutely great. We love that. And what you got there, baby? I'm going to, today, put me Sunday roast in here. I'm putting the veg at the bottom, well, potatoes, carrots and parsnips at the bottom. Then I'm going to put me pork on there, on the top. And I'm going to steam pressure. Steam pressure? Yeah, then afterwards I'll actually fry to get the crispiness for me potatoes, drain them and me crackling. We've got to tell you this, Fingers folks. Crossed. We've got to tell you this. You know our five hour kebab which we made, our Donna kebab, which turned out absolutely fantastic in the slow cooker? Yeah. We done one yesterday on the pressure cooker. How long did it take, baby? It took, in the pressure cooker, same sort of size, it took 30 minutes on the pressure cooker. Then I aired fried it for 20 minutes, turning halfway through. Just to get that crispy surface, because a lot of you mentioned about, oh, you can air fry that as well. Well, give it the brown look as well. Yeah, and it, done it to a T. This little ninja uh, foodie max, I think, isn't it? 15 in one? 15 in one foodie, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. So we cooked our five hour kebab. In an hour, roughly. In an hour, basically yes. in an hour, yeah. yeah. So absolutely fantastic. And it was a treat, honestly. I can't see us going to a kebab shop again, shall we? No, no. Really, honestly, it's that good. Got our new whistling kettle there, as you know. We're just using up our last few bottles. On our, hab on our little hob. We're not going to stop using these, folks, because no. these are really, really handy. And also, in the summer, or when the weather gets a bit better, we might do some cooking outside as well. That's when these are going to come into their own. They're freestanding, and they're absolutely perfect for cooking. Well, you've seen us cook for the last five or six months using these as well. The root vegetable Sharon has of a weekend. I won't be having them, by the way, because I'm on the... Um, now my little Frankie likes it. Uh, very, shop. very low carb diet. And um, Jimmy doesn't like a roast. We've been on our diet now. Well, not diet. We've been on our corrected eating plan now for a week. Well, just under a week, actually. Started on the Tuesday show, wasn't it? Yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah, so it's not a full week. It's probably five days. And any differences within five days? What did you say to me the other day when I got up and I was standing there? He lost weight. She said, without me even thinking, I was standing in front of her, she said, you've lost weight, you can see it already. And what that is, folks, as I mentioned before, is because I've cut out dairy, dairy does tend to inflame your internals, and one of the side effects of having inflamed internals uh, when you have dairy can be aching joints. So if you wake up in the morning, you've got aching joints, knee, ankles, wrist joints and stuff like that, or even your back is stiff, try going without dairy. And also, one of the effects is, is that you lose all the, what happens, like, you know what happens when you burn yourself and you've got inflammation there? You get a blister, water retention, and that's what you get when you eat dairy. And one of the things that clears your system out, first of all, when you stop eating dairy, is you lose a lot of water. Hence, you're losing a, a lot of puffiness, so to speak. So if you've got puffy features, 
and you're retaining fluid, just try cutting out the dairy like I've I have done. I've cut out the carbs and I seem to spend my life on the toilet at the moment, we in. Oh, that's another thing as well. Toilet motions, I know it might sound oh, crude, but, but you've got to know, if, you've got a pan, if you're a pan splatterer, right, that means that something's not going on well within your digestive Sorry, system. You know, sorry if you just had your dinner. <laughs> no, Shell. You, you've got to tell people yeah. because that is totally being, in five days, that is totally being corrected now. I'm laying bleak in baby's arms now, I baby. Used to, I used to always lay baby's arms. <laughs> That's in five days. My energy sorry. levels have come back. I feel I've lost weight. I don't ache. And I've got more energy, more clarity. So that is what's happened in five days as well. So just stick with it, folks. Once you get past the first two or three days, and don't forget, as I've said before, just below this video, watch my We're Coming Back videos. But don't cheat. We're down to probably one meal a day, to be honest with you. We do sometimes have a little snack around one o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, that will be... But that's not a meal. It's not a meal, no. It might be a few rashes of bacon and maybe, uh, maybe an egg, for example, or something like that. A boiled egg. I like roll mop, but I can't get it. Yeah, she likes roll mop, oh, which is again milk. high protein, nice, nice food. So like stick, fresh salmon. stick with it, folks, and you will start to feel better after the first couple of days. I've nearly got rid of that blinking virus, Sharon, although it keeps coming back a little bit, doesn't it? As it did over the Christmas period, but I feel better within myself now. I'm not as coffee or chesty as I was, and I'm hopefully through the worst of it. I know a lot of you have got that virus that you've had, and. Um, it just drags on. Viruses ain't what they used to be years ago, Shao. No. Used to get a cold or the flu. She's been ill for ages now and had antibiotics and she's ill again today. Yeah, and I know a lot of people on that, well, our YouTube family uh, have, have had it or got it sort of thing. So, yeah, you've just got to muddle through it, but stay off the carbs, help your body out, try and stay off the dairy, uh, cancel the inflammation. And as I say, in five days, I've noticed a difference as well. And if I will say, if you do follow our, our meal plan, no, it's not a plan. If you do follow the sort of food we've been eating, which is very low carb, if any, you will, the, the, the more overweight you are, the more weight you will lose at the beginning. So that is a bonus. You'll see a, a result straight away. But don't cheat. And the great thing is, as I said to you, there's no real portion control. You eat as much as you want of the right foods until you're full and then leave it. I've, I, I looked over what she's just put in there and I thought, hello, that looks nice. We've just whacked this. Let's show them, Shell. Let's show them. So, what's that you saying? If you want us to show you, well, this is me test one actually. Yeah. To see how it all goes. This is our roast pork. Tracy's husband, Ben's been making dinners for her, and he's used the pressure cooker of steam roast for the joint of meat, which yeah. is the first time for me. So, so you I... just put some salt on the top of that, haven't yeah. you? So, it's as you can see. It's pointless, really, when I'm steam roasting there. Yeah, but the, as you can see there, the. Um, that's the air fryer part of it there. Make sure you keep your seal clean here, folks, around there. That's what creates the seal on this lip here for when you're steam, steaming the thing. And looking in the bottom there, as you can see, she's got that trivet, and underneath the trivet is the uh, vegetable sitting in a water. Now, you're going to be steaming this steam? Yeah, steam roast. Right. And you do need a certain amount of water in there, folks, when you're doing the steaming, apparently, or even the pressure cooking. Yeah, just so, cover. Just cover. As you can see, it's not completely covered, the veg, but it's mainly covered over to, for the steam. Yeah. So what do you do now with this? So you shut the lid down. This could be a bit early, people. Just getting everything ready. Right, you turn it on. I'll switch it on as well. So you turn it on. You it, slide right? your lever. Because what happens here, folks, when you've got the lever in that position, it gives you this menu selection. And you turn the duct, you've got air fryer, grill, bake, dehydrate, Prove, sear or saute, steam, slow cook or yogurt. That's when the handle's in this position. That means that you can lift that up because it's not locked. As soon as you slide the handle across to the lock position, it brings in the pressure menu, which is natural release, quick release or delayed release. So it tells you in the book what the different things do there. So what are you gonna go on there, baby? What's the middle? Oh, I never see that. There you go, see? The middle, the middle. Brings up another set, steam folks. Meals. Steam roast, steam air fry. Steam roast. Steam, steam bake, bake and steam, steam bread. Bake. I didn't even know there was one there. there Look at that, go. folks. You learn and something I think new. as well. So what are you putting this on now, then, this meat? I'm getting the book out, people, because this is my first time. Steam roast, fresh pork. So just to show you that, that's the combi steam. We're on steam roast at the moment, folks. And in the book there, it tells you the steam roast for fresh poultry, beef, 
fresh pork, fresh lamb. It gives you all the details you need. Oh, how much yeah. water you need to add, the temperatures to cook it at and for how long as well. So it's all there for the right size of meat. So 300 to 500 grams of pork, it tells you there. You would need 250 milliliters of water in the bottom, which we've got, and you would set the uh, temperature to 180 degrees C. So I've got the pork loin, so it's 180 for 45 minutes. Where does it say that? 45 minutes? Yeah. Well, 40. 40 minutes, yeah. So we go for 45, it don't matter, does it? No, we go 40 like it's said. Oh, okay. Because at the end, I'm going to then air fry it. So it gets yeah, so once it's finished, you'll take your veg out, won't you? I should take my veg out. I will then strain them off and then get them air fried. Yeah, and we'll air fry it for the simple reason being that we'll have the uh, crackling air fried by that big element at the top. And there you go. So we're still learning with this, folks, but we've what we've found so far is that this Ninja is a fantastic piece of kit for bringing long cooking times down to a low level and under the pressure cooker part of it, it really tenderizes that meat in a short time, mm. doesn't it? So we're gonna be bringing obviously more of these to you. We're still gonna be using our Ninja and our Kasori air fries, which we still do oh, use. Oh, yeah, I still use them. And uh, then we're gonna be bringing to you the induction hob, which we showed earlier on in this video as well. But we're still using these, and they are great. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this video, folks. There's not much happening today. It's, it is Sunday, the day of the uploading of this video. So we'll see you in the next video. Don't forget we're uploading on Tuesdays and Thursdays now, our food videos. And, and don't forget, all you that aren't subscribed, subscribe. It doesn't cost a penny. Yeah. Hit that, ring that bell. Hit that little notification bell, just under the subscribe button, I think. It's all next to it, isn't it? And that means that every time we upload our videos, which we do upload them at the right same time every week, five o'clock in the evening, and our vlog, which comes on at eight o'clock on a Sunday evening, our premiere. Anyway, thanks very much, folks. We'll see you in the next video. And until then, bye for now. Bye.